welcome back. So last time we spawned a random invader. But now when he walks to the right, he just hits the boundary and continues going downwards. And this looks pretty bad in my opinion. If I now pause this, you will see that he is on the position 18 on minus X, which means he is hitting the limit, the right limit of the map. And the left limit of the map is 18, so he would be hitting that if he was on the left side. And it kind of feels off to just hit the wall and continue moving downwards. So I'm going to modify his script to make sure we don't do that. Let's go ahead and open his enemy controller. And now I'm going to create a... You see here how on the switch timer, we when the change timer was less than zero, we basically checked if direction switch is true. If it was, we would set it to false. And if it was false, we would set it to true. So let's go ahead and actually create a method that's going to be doing all of this. And you see how we usually create a void method. That means that it isn't returning anything. But this time we will create a boolean, bool, which means it will return a boolean. And let's call this method switch direction. Actually, let's just switch there for short. For short. And now this is underlined because we need to pass in a variable here. So let's call it, Let's we of course need a boolean. And let's call it direction. And it's still underlined because we haven't returned a boolean. If this, if any method isn't a boolean, it isn't a void, it requires a value to be returned. So let's go ahead and say if direction is true, then we're going to set direction switch to be false. Else we're going to set it, oops, to set it to true. And now that we've done that, we can just say return, not renderer, return direction switch. There we go. Now this basically does what this what this did, but it's a bit more readable and we can call it whenever, whenever we feel like. So let's go ahead and replace this in the switch timer with switch direction. And of course we need now to pass in the boolean, which is direction switch in our case. So now how this script works is when the change timer is less than zero, we will call switch direction and we pass in the direction switch variable which can either be true or false at this point. Well, let's say if it's true, then we call this method and we say if direction is true, direction now refers to the previous direction switch. If it's true, we will set it to false, which we do. And then we return direction switch, which means we get, we get the value from this method and just update it. So let's go ahead now that we've done that in our update method, we need to somehow check if the ship is hitting the boundaries. So let's go ahead. This is really easy. Just say if transform dot position dot X is equal to 18. In my case, it's 18, 18, because I've set the boundaries to 18. In your case, it might be different. So if his position is 18, you're just going to say switch direction and pass in the current direction. So this method now basically turns this boolean from true to false and from false to true and now again if the transform dot position dot x is equal to minus 18 we want to again call the switch direction there we go let's now run our game see if it works and in fact it does you see he hit the boundary and he changed the direction let's see that again there we go. Works great. So that this has been a quick lecture just to polish up the ship movement. This of course now automatically works for all the enemy ships. Just make sure that if, if you update the limits to update it in the script and a nice way we can be even more precise is instead of saying numbers like this, we can just say limits dot minimum Actually, this is going to be maximum x, maximum x. And down here, we're going to say limits dot minimum x. There we go. So if our, trans if our current position x is equal to the maximum position x, we're going to switch direction. Now you'll see that this works exactly as it did previously. There we go. 
But now, the thing is, if I go to my invader, and if I set his limits to be maybe, instead of minus 18, minus 15 and 15. You will see how he bounces off sooner. But if you just kept the numbers, you would have to go back to the script and update the numbers. But like this, it's always going to be updated the same. Just make sure to update the limits on the prefab. And it's going to return them to 18. And that's going to be it for this lecture. In the next one, we will, we will be creating the random spawning of the enemies. And we will, be, we will be adding score. So until then, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Konnichiwa.